you've made it to the right place. You want to cook tuna on the grill. Let's jump right into it. In addition to the tuna, we'll be making an awesome Japanese dipping sauce to go along with this. We'll be using a large sportsman's grill and doing cooking over your standard Kingsford charcoal. Quick tip, use your side burner to get your coals started. Doing it this way completely eliminates the flavor and odor of the lighter fluid. While those coals are going, we'll go ahead and prep the tuna as well as do a good Japanese dipping sauce. Once mixed and chilled down, this Japanese dipping sauce with the lemon zest gives quite a bit of fresh flavor and pairs well nicely with tuna. This will go sit in the fridge until it's ready to come out. It's best served cold. You can certainly use tuna out of your grocer's case, but we caught this tuna offshore, which is a whole nother separate video, and it needs a little bit of cleanup. There's some sinew that resides on it, a little bit of skin. That's a yellow fin in that picture, but what we're using here was actually a black fin. So some of that dark meat needs to be trimmed off, just a little bit of trim work. You'll hear me say it over and over again in my videos, you've got to dry that meat off. Otherwise, when it hits the grill or the skillet or the pan or whatever it's going into, it actually ends up steaming as opposed to searing, getting good quality grill marks or any kind of crispy crust to it. We coat this in olive oil and it's a very simple recipe, simple salt and pepper, and then we head out to the grill. If you want to kick it up a notch, you can throw a little bit of zest on the outside. Here I'm using some lime, and it gives it a nice little acidic or tart flavor that sets that tuna off nicely. It took me a little bit longer to get all that prep work done, so my coals burned down a little bit further. I had to add some more. You definitely want that grill grate screaming hot, and if you hold your hand over the grill grates, this chart gives you an idea of if the minute you start to feel pain, if you start to count, that tells you what the temperature of that grill grate is and you want it pushing 500 degrees. You'll also notice that we've got those grill grates upside down as opposed to right side up as it is in this video. That gets that meat and those grates closer to the coals, therefore you get some better heat building on the meat surface. Now with that high heat, you're burning off some of your seasoning, so you're going to want to do a little bit of prep work. Otherwise, you're going to get sticking of the meat to that grill grate surface. If there's only two things that you get from this video, it's make certain that that meat is dry, dry, dry when you put it on the grill so you're actually searing and not steaming, as well as let the meat tell you when it's ready to lift off. The proteins will release off of the grill easily, and come right up, especially with fish when it isn't quite done or those proteins haven't released from the cast iron or the grill grates, you end up tearing the fish and it ends up sticking to the grill. And it doesn't matter if it's a steak, a filet, or a, a nice sized chunk like this, you're grilling each of the sides and allowing that meat to release. I like mine a bit more on the medium rare side. And with this cast iron lodge sportsman's grill, I also like a counter 90 degree grill marks spread across just about any meat that I put on there. It does a great job when the grill grates are upside down of putting those marks on. This filet was cooked a little bit further done. I've got friends that like it cooked like this and it finished off a little further in the rest. This is more my speed. With the addition of that chilled Japanese dipping sauce, the freshness of the lemons in it, the lime there to put on at your option, this dish is really, really amazing. I also like a little bit of an option to dip in some sriracha along with the rest of this. A little bit of heat I always like in my dishes. If you enjoyed the video, we do a bunch more cooking in the channel, a lot of cast iron, some carbon steel, and overall, just things that you can enjoy. We'll go ahead and close out for you this clip of a video of our recent trip offshore in our boat. And we had this really incredible interaction with wild dolphins off the shores of Virginia Beach. Yeah, come on, come on.
coming in. Here, my son and I are building a school of squid trolling rig. We haven't caught anything on you yet, but come back and you'll be able to see this in action. has their little idiosyncrasies mm -hmm. as to where the bones are. And generally, if you go like this, you can find them. And now that is a completely, in theory, bonus So YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits. This is my latest upload, and over here is a playlist that you might just enjoy. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more.